Hey, what's happening everyone? Pragmatic Addict here. So, at the time of like recording this video, I just saw First Omen, but at the time of putting this video up, yeah, I saw it the other day, because I got home and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna watch the Abigail second trailer. I'll, I'll do a video on that, because guys, this movie went fucking hard. So I'm just gonna uh, say something real quick. I've never been the hugest fan of the first Omen, and I haven't really seen any of the shit shows afterward. And just, not only as a continuation to like an iconic film, or a horror, or like iconic horror film, but just like religious horror films in general just aren't my favorite films. They just don't really get the best reception. They aren't the most strongest or most like original thing in the genre, but here's a couple things of why I went and saw this movie, besides the fact that I'm just like a film critic that does weekly content. So this one actually had a lot of promotion for, I mean, you name it. Trailers, TV spots, featurettes, this film had everything, left and right. They even did a fucking 35mm release of this film in select theaters, which now, after watching this film, I'm like, god damn. I, I wish that got in my city. But this film was actually getting great reviews upon release, and I was just like, Really? The sixth installment in an Omen franchise after th this shit? Well guys, I saw the first Omen, and I'm just gonna say something really quickly before I finally get into the review. This film apparently had to keep getting re-edited because it kept hitting the NC-17 rating, and I'm like, an NC-17 rated Omen prequel? It's got great reviews, I mean, none of this is really bad from what I'm hearing. But let me just say, yeah, this is definitely a hard R Omen prequel. So guys, let's get into the fucking first omen. So the plot here reads, a woman starts to question her own faith when she uncovers a terrifying conspiracy to bring about the birth of evil incarnate in Rome. So yes guys, with this being the next religious horror film, a prequel to the omen, having that premise where it's like, oh cool, an innocent nun comes to a fucking church and a bunch of shit goes haywire. It's not like that, which I will get into, but first off, I really want to know like, the style of this movie. It's got like that feeling of just evil itself is really lurking. It's got kind of like the feeling of like how I felt with ironic enough the movie when evil lurks where you just are seeing a series of events going fucking wrong and when it's not centered on that you just feel like you don't want to put your guard down. This doesn't feel like the religious horror in the sense of religion is the drive. It just feels like that is the setting where this woman played by Nell Tiger Free, she arrives at the church in Rome and she just wants to go there, do her fucking thing. She's very devoted for to her faith and not only does shit go wrong, but evil itself. The fucking devil, the antichrist, they're preying on this woman. And that just goes about as fucked as you could possibly imagine in a nearly NC-17 prequel to Omen that is actually fucking good. I also want to state, uh, the casting for this movie is really solid. So I believe his name is Ralph Einson or Ralph Innocent. He's the guy that was in The Witch was another religious horror of sorts. And also Nell Tiger Free, the main character of this film. She was in M. Night Shemlin's uh, religious horror series, Servant. So I'm like, okay, right off the bat, the cast here, They've got experience, and this does go for the setup, but it also just goes for the movie in general where this film, it doesn't feel weighty, it just immediately has better lore, it has better direction, better acting as a nearly NC-17 prequel to the classic Omen. And one thing that this movie does, right, that a lot of religious horrors fail at, is that it understands how it should feel. It understands how it should be as both a horror film, as a religious horror, but also as a continuation to a cult horror film, like The Omen. You know, you're not just seeing birds fly into the fucking window, you're not just following Nell Tiger Free and uh, confessional booths and down dark hallways in the middle of the night. This film captures the idea and premise and aesthetic and feeling of how I feel all religious horror films should feel which is that you're genuinely seeing and feeling from the atmosphere, direction, committed performances that an unexpected, overwhelming evil is taking over something that is supposed to be so sacred and like a safe haven 
like a church. You really do feel like these alarming opposites, like the birth of the Antichrist and evil in general, is preying on this church and more so this very innocent, faith devouted woman who is a stranger to this whole, like, setting. And a huge reason <laughs> to this is, again, because of how believable and organic and realistic Nell Tiger Free's performance is. As an innocent young woman, as a stranger to this church, as someone highly committed to her faith, but also just the whole setup here. Really just exploring the lore of this community, realizing slowly within, with this being a two-hour film, that something sinister is clearly brewing and coming to the realization of what the extent of that actually is. You get so equally hugely invested in that setting, plus you get so attached to this character and relate to her and really worry for her every moment. And I love that as a religious horror film, not only was this a solid movie, but I generally wanted to just go down the rabbit hole of this lore, of this place, and wanted to walk alongside this character through this horror film. As a religious horror film that is the sixth installment to the Omen franchise, I was not expecting to eventually say I am so ready for this film to be a two hour runtime. The movie does everything solid that the religious horrors have always failed to do. The horror doesn't even have to be the center, so long as you're able to believe that evil itself is there and like evil itself a really fun thing about this movie is that all the scares and like that threat it works in the ways of it's always in the shadows it's always there but you never really know what it's trying to pull it's it's they're in that unpredictable, unseen way that evil is, that evil works. Another thing that this film does that uh, a lot of religious horror films fail to do is that the film still feels natural and really relatable to anyone watching because with a title like religious horror, you immediately think it's just going to go into that lore with like a certain religion or a belief which is just very hit and miss. But who Nell Tiger Free's character is in this movie, she is who she is, but she is also a human being with human aspects. We see her going to things like nightclubs and trying to live and, you know, actually have a life, trying to make those attempts and attempts and, like, not be alienated and foreign in this secular life. And even the thing that had me really worried about this film initially, which was, like, this being a religious horror film where, you know, it centers on maybe, like, a nun or whatever getting possessed, that does happen in the movie, but it's not like the thing where you see it coming or like where this threat this evil that is hunting this person down or like attaching itself to whatever you never really know it's there like i said until it really reveals itself you never really know it's there other than the fact that you know like what the movie is what kind of movie it is so you're like okay it's probably lurking about somewhere but you don't really know that it's there until it makes its presence known and when it makes its presence known yeah, hard R prequel to The Omen, guys. And I gotta say, like, when I, when I heard that going into this movie, I was like, I wonder, like, if it's just gonna be, like, gory or, like, for, like, shock factor. It is gory, and it is shocking, but it is necessary. It is effective in all the ways that you can imagine. There's actually a handful of hardcore scenes where I'm like, which one was the one that, like, straw that broke the camel's back here? Now, if I had to really, like, find nitpicks or, like, negatives about the film, there are a couple things that I think were just kind of, like, goofy. Not bad, per se, but just kind of, like, again, we're, we're goofy where it's like, this is a horny fucking movie. There are tons of scenes in here where you're just seeing people kiss each other, people go up, give someone a smooch, go up to someone, lick their forehead, and go on with their day. There are also times where there are still themes of religious horror that went over my head, but... It didn't, like, lose me in the sense of, like, the full movie or, like, the full story. It's not to the film's detriment because as a two-hour two -hour horror film like this that does everything so much immensely better than pretty much every other religious horror, you're just watching this movie frame by frame going on with this character just wanting to see where each scene takes you next that, next that you're not really invested in this movie, again, as a religious horror film. I also want to talk about something that I was afraid could be like in the spoiler territory but it's it's really not with the evil that is hunting down this woman there are times like teases and like brief moments where you see it take on a physical form or not even like take on a physical form but you see it in what would be evil's physical form and i just gotta say man the practical effects in this movie not just with those scenes but just in general character deaths like uh like the how they do with makeup it is some of the most standout scenes in this movie and just like as 
those brief scenes where it does take that possession horror feel. Some of the most gnarly, most uncomfortable scenes that I, I've seen in that regard where I'm like, okay, as a, like, Lord to like a cursed film, this is kind of hitting the mark. Especially in the last act, there's a lot of gnarly imagery and lore that made me feel like this really was as gnarly as like the Exorcist or the Omen was back in the day and easily is Nell Tiger Free's most terrifying and most exhaustive performance that really just had me thinking like, okay, I was not ready for this. Let's just get this scene over. This is probably the end of the movie. They're gonna go out with a bang. Let's just rip the band-aid off. Once you get through that, you're good. But the way this movie wraps up, just as a climax cinematically is like the last way I really expected this movie to wrap up. Which I'm just gonna say no spoilers but solid ending, solid movie, solid Omen prequel. So guys that is gonna do it for my review of the first Omen. Monkey Man is also out this weekend. We also got CinemaCon in a couple days where WB, Disney, Lionsgate, a lot of panels are gonna be coming. We are for sure getting the first trailer for Joker too. So guys, rest assured videos are back. Which I'm just gonna say I was planning on doing a review of the South Park game that came out last week, Snow Day. That was going to be like the review I had planned, but dude, for a four hour game, apparently it's four hours, I couldn't finish it. I was so disappointed that I couldn't finish it. And I was like, well, what else do we got? Blood and Honey 2 and Godzilla vs. Kong. So obviously, Godzilla and Kong was the standout of that weekend. And then on August 12th, we got releases such as Civil War and Sting. So excited that we're back, guys. But yes, guys, that is going to do it for this review. Let me know what you guys thought about the review as well as this movie for those that did see it. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts because this is one I really was not expecting to deliver the way it did. But yeah, Yes, guys, with all that being said, I've been Pragmatic Addict. Thank you guys as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.